Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. I would like to wish you a Merry Christmas, a time where you will just experience the peace of God, where you can meditate, think upon, ponder upon uh, what Christ has done for you. This is a time where my family and I and many people over the world just celebrate the birth of Christ. You know, we can be very technical and say, but was Jesus really born on this day? Who cares? <laughs> We're just celebrating uh, Jesus and His birth and the Incarnation. Isn't that a beautiful thing to do? To take a day and just feast around what Christ has done and feast around the revelation of the Incarnation. I want to tell all of my friends on Facebook, uh, all of the um, faithful followers of Dynamical of Ministries and the messages that spread the message of grace, all my pastor friends, um, you know, may this day and this time of the year be a time of great joy for you, a time where you just experience what it is to be um, hugged by God, be embraced by God, where your mind is um, renewed in the goodness of God, where you can, um, maybe you are not with family, uh, with me, I'm with my wife and children, we, don't, we didn't have family um, over or anything like that. Um, I mean, people live far and uh, things just didn't work out that way, but um, in that time that you may just experience the closeness of God, the love of God, the power of the Incarnation. I'm going to just speak for five minutes about the Incarnation and what Christ has brought for us. One of the greatest, or let me put it this way, the greatest utterance of the Word of God is the Incarnation. The greatest utterance you could ever see of what God is actually saying is when God incarnated human flesh, uh, died away the legalistic system and was ra raised up in immortal human flesh to sit inside human flesh in the Godhead forever, uh, to, for, to, to have glorified human flesh as His abode, as His place of dwelling forever. Uh, that is the greatest way of seeing what God is actually saying, to see the heart of God, to see who God really is, to see what um, faith, hope, love, the fruit of who God is all springs from, uh, where it all uh, uh, comes out of the very heart, the way he believes, the way he thinks, the way he reasons, is all seen in the Incarnation. If we look at the angels in heaven, uh, you know, I believe that when they would look at God, they would just close their faces and, and uh, the Bible talks about God as being an unapproachable light or bright light. And uh, these angels would feel the love of God and they would worship God and all those kind of things, but never really could they behold God um, in physical form. And here the f God comes and He incarnates Himself into human flesh, completely comfortable in human flesh, knowing that inside a human being, a human can give full expression to who God really is, and that God wouldn't feel uh, shortchanged inside a human body saying, I can't express myself. Uh, he comes and he incarnates himself into human flesh and he's called Emmanuel, God with us. And um, he dwelt amongst us, he, he walked amongst us, and we could see who he really was. And when the angels saw the word of God, when they saw what God was actually saying uh, all the time, they saw and said that, um, you know, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill toward man. Goodwill, the very reputation of God, is also the reputation of man. The very, the, the, I don't know how to say it another way. Uh, when the angels saw God inside man, then they, I think they also got this revelation and said, goodwill toward man. Goodwill means of the highest reputation, and the highest reputation there could be is that of God Himself, and that is now toward man, where we can have, where they actually looked at man and saw man for who and what man was designed for, to be the dwelling place of the Almighty, 
You know, God's end goal wasn't to live in heaven. God's end goal was to live in you and to have you share in His quality of life and to have Him live in you and to then dwell with you in a way that you could have eternal bliss and joy in what He has accomplished and decided before the foundation of the earth that you would be His friend. And um, that is awesome. That is absolute good news. Now, uh, when we go to the scripture, we see Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, A child was born, a son was given. Now, what does that mean? When Jesus was born as a baby, that baby didn't actually mean a lot to us. What, what meant something was what God actually gave in that baby. And what He gave in that baby was a son. What He gave to us um, what He gave to mankind was sonship. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection. And when Jesus was raised from the dead, He possessed immortality in His physical body and therefore He was proven to be the Son of God with authority. And what that means is God declared and proclaimed to the whole world that this Jesus is His Son by raising him from the dead and me meaning if, if we say we're the son of God it means that what is inside God is inside us and here Jesus is fully declared the son of God possessing the life of God even in, uh, uh, in, in uh, a physical human body and that son is what was, was given unto mankind so when the son of man became the son of God and we know that Jesus has always been the Son of God. Uh, from His birth, He was the Son of God. But the moment He was raised from the dead, He was the Son of God with power. Meaning, He came into the full sonship in every area of His life, possessing immortal human flesh. And that sonship is what's given to us so that we can have the same blessed hope of life. Not just in spirit and soul, but from spirit and soul unto our even our physical bodies, wherein we will say unto death, O death, where is your sting? Even if I would die, I would live again. And I can even be changed, you know, in the return of Christ and never see death as um, Jesus said it in His return. This is the mystery. When Christ comes, what will happen? We will be changed and we will see a Son was given unto us so that we can now say that we have attained unto the adoption of sonship wherein we are, we are not now the children of God or the sons of God if you want to call it like that, but we will find the full manifestation of sonship inside us which is also called the adoption according to Romans 8. So, these words maybe you've never heard in your life, but let me say it to you. A child was given, but we cannot think of the child without thinking of the raised son. For that is, a child was born, but was, what was given unto us wasn't the baby, wasn't the child. What God gave unto you was the son of God, the son of man in the Trinity being God's word about you wherein you are now begotten unto a new and living hope through the resurrection which is to have the fullness of sonship manifest in your life in every area of your life for the word of God is sharp than any two-edged sword dividing asunder he is quick alive dividing life to spirit soul and body glory to God have a blessed Christmas thank you so much guys all our web pastors and just people that, that are good friends all over the world. Thank you so much for all your love and just have a blessed time. See you soon. God bless.